Yeah, thank you everyone for uh, joining me today. This is the second time I'm presenting during this lunch talks. So I presented two years ago. I believe I talked about computer-aided design and a little bit about emerging computing systems. And uh, it's uh, great to be back here because my, my research has shifted a little bit more towards artificial intelligence. So uh, it would be great to update everyone on what I'm doing and to see if there is any new opportunities for collaborations. So yeah, just a quick uh, background about myself. I mean, I, I grew up in Sweden. I moved to the US when I was around 25 years old. I went to uh, Purdue University for graduate school and got my degree there from 2000 in 2016. Since then, I've been an assistant professor here at UCF and, uh, and I'll be uh, tenured and promoted in August. So uh, soon I'll be an associate professor. So the yeah the three main domains that I've been working on is AI and emerging computing systems and computer aided design for VLSI. Uh, I've been engaged in uh, teaching different classes here at UCF. So mainly I've been teaching one of our undergraduate classes on programming. So introducing students to coding in C and C plus plus, and then. Uh, I'm teaching a class on VLSI circuits where they're learning how to automatically de design circuits. And then uh, we just got the course approved on, uh, on AI uh, and it will either it will start next semester or yeah, during the spring or the, the spring after. So some more notable achievements would be that we, we got the best uh, paper award nomination from Medit and from ASPDAC uh, in the recent years, which is very exciting. Uh, and I also won the, like the NSF CRI award uh, a couple of years back when it was very competitive, and uh, and some other stipends. So my, so that's that's some awards. And then um, in terms of my research group, I think I have around six PhD students now, and I'm actively trying to recruit a couple of more now with some new grants coming in. So in terms of uh, research, more specifically. So the, the three areas that I'm really excited about is uh, robust and explainable artificial intelligence, uh, emerging computing systems and paradigms, and the uh, computer the design of Willisai. So I started working on these topics with the right topic, and I, now I'm doing a little bit less of that and a little bit more on the on the two topics to the left. So what's uh, yeah. Uh, We've been pretty lucky in terms of funding, securing some NSF grants on, on, on the first two topics. But what's, what's really interesting recently has been working on artificial intelligence because there's so much happening in that area. So there's a lot of interest from not only NSF, but from, uh, from DARPA and from some local companies. So I think most likely we're getting a grant from Lockheed and uh, we're applying for some grants from DOE and some, uh, some new awards uh, from DARPA. But uh, there is just so much change in, that, in the area of artificial intelligence. So I think there's uh, such an opportunity to do new research and discover new problems and solve new problems. So, so that is kind of where my main focus is right now. So yeah, let's, let, let me tell you why I'm excited about AI and then I'm gonna talk about some of the challenges and then I'll continue with a couple of our solutions. So, so what's new? So you might recognize this picture from, from Google. So this was in the news maybe two weeks ago, or was it three weeks ago, about uh, generative artificial intelligence. So there, there was a research scientist at Google who claimed that, the, that their chat robot, uh, Lambda AI, has become a sentinel, which means that it has consciousness. So the, there is this whole branch of research within AI now that's about generating content. So it can be... Uh, chat robots where you talk to a robot and you try and determine if, uh, I mean, it can give you support, uh, like HR support, I mean, uh, uh, or just uh, it can be like a, a bot to answer like any type of question that you have or in a doctor's office. You can also use generative artificial intelligence to try and paint pictures. So there is a new, uh, there's something called Dolly now, so you can tell it paint me a picture of a car and it will paint you a picture of a car. I mean, it's all pretty amazing. So there, there's a lot of things happening there. Then also in terms of uh, reinforcement learning, uh, there was a lot of excitement a couple of years ago about AlphaGo, 
when uh, the first we had the first AI that could beat uh, the best human player in in the board game Go, which is extremely complex. But more recently now they've developed uh, reinforcement learning uh, agents that uh, there's one called the Alpha Star that can actually beat the best humans in StarCraft. And I mean, uh, both games are extremely difficult, but it's but. Uh, like StarCraft has a lot of flexibility. You can do a lot of different actions and a lot of different things at the same time. So it's not so that easy to program an AI to do this. For Go, it's like you have one action and you got to pick one of the squares. So this is extremely complicated and it's very exciting that, that we have some new results there. So then the, the last topic is this called uh, multimodal learning. Uh, before we have had one network that is trying to do one task. So we, in the, I mean, for example, that you train a network that is doing object detection or, or image classification. And then you have a separate network that is uh, trying to understand text doing NLP. And then you have a se separate network that is trying to do audio. So recently there has been a lot of progress in how can I take inputs in all of the different senses and process them at the same time to be able to do uh, make better decisions and to reuse the networks to do uh, all of the different times, types of processing. So, th so these are some of the things that are new. So let me talk about what some of some new challenges are with respect to kind of these areas. So, so one of the areas that I'm really interested in is explainability. So these new networks, they can have like 135 billion parameters if we look at GPT-3. I mean, they're called foundational models. We can't even really train them by, by ourselves because it's so expensive to train them. So we have these huge models and they all look like I've shown here in the figure. It's, yeah, we have nodes that are connected by some weights. And how do we understand how this model makes decisions? So that uh, there's been some work on that, but that's still a very challenging problem. So if if you're using a neural network to get to check if someone is qualified for a credit card, you can't just say that you're, you're not approved. You have to give, at least you should be able to give some kind of explanation for why this person isn't approved. So, and if you, if we want to connect this to one of the items I talked about on the previous slide, uh, think about this, but with the reinforcement learning, when you have trained an agent, how can you explain, maybe it's easy to explain how an image classifier works, where you have an input and it gives you a category. But how do you explain how a reinforcement agent, how like this AI that's playing StarCraft is 10 minutes into the game is making this decision that now I should build this or now I should move these things over here. So like explainability in terms of reinforcement learning is extremely interesting. Um, but also, so another, another problem that, we, uh, that we're working on in, in terms of uh, one of the DARPA projects that I'm leading is uh, how to defend the neural networks against attacks. So uh, I think everyone has seen this picture of a stop sign uh, where they've changed a couple of pixels. It's called an adversarial attack. And uh, now, we, now the AI will view this as a, a yield sign or, 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 or something completely different. So there, but those attacks are not very practical. But then the, there's this new avenue of like physical patch attacks where they have actually, I mean, where you paste like a patch in a real environment and the AI will not react to things in that area. So for example, in this figure here, you can see that there's an object detector that works pretty well. It picks up all of the cars and all of the humans, but the humans that are in front of this patch, they are not, they can't be identified. So. These attacks can actually be applied in the real world. So how can we defend ourselves against them? And the challenge becomes even worse when you're looking in the context of a multimodal learning. So if you have an AI that is learning both like audio and vision and everything at the same time, now you can write, for example, pizza, like with text on the wall, and then it's gonna focus on the text instead of focusing on, on the human. So, I mean, when we're learning to be smarter, then we're also open up new vulnerabilities for attacks. So let me continue with some of the work that that uh, that we have done in this context. So I mean, we've published some uh, recent work in in Triple AI in Ishkai uh, during the last two years. So these are some of the most competitive conferences within artificial intelligence. So some some of the work that we have uh, in terms of explainability. So the, here we're actually looking at. 
uh, at a little bit simpler problem. We're asking like, why in this picture is this classified as a dog? Uh, or maybe it's a deer. And the, we can find that these are the pixels in the input image that is making this classification in, into a dog. So if we looked at some of the previous approaches, they usually pick up a lot of different edges. They can't really find the, the, the object itself. They just, uh, they, I mean, even though they're not, uh, they haven't assigned uh, uh, an algorithm to pick up edges, they typically find some of the edges in the image in addition to the object. And then we also have some work on uh, like how to, um, we can use this attribute. So this is called attribution. So we have also tried to use these attributions to figure out like here we have a patch attack, a very naive patch attack, but uh, just uh, it illustrates the concept that, so we ask the, like, why is this picture in the bottom here classified? I think it, maybe it's as like a fire truck or something when there's clearly like a whale or, or a shark there in the background. So then we figured out, we asked for the attribution. So they figured out that this, these are the points that making this be classified as a fire truck. And then we removed the patch and then we applied some inpainting to kind of restore the image. So we're developing some defenses, how to protect these neural networks on the fly. Uh, so let me check just so much. Okay, so I have already, I, uh, I've already talked for my 10 minutes. So let, let, me, let me wrap this up really quickly. Um, let me, I'll, I'm just gonna skip the, this part about, I think I talked a lot about this when I talked two years ago about emerging computing paradigms. So let me jump through this. Yeah, so some of the things that I'm excited about to work on in the future would be to continue working on AI, but then also looking at EDA for quantum computing. I mean, I think the quantum computing is becoming more real now and there's a lot of need for tools how to work with these quantum devices because uh, it's very complicated and you need to be able to simulate how the systems work before we are going to get the hardware to, to really be where it needs to be to be commercialized. So yeah, uh, with that, let me conclude my presentation by thanking like all of my sponsors, my, my current and my, some of my former students and then my collaborators at, uh, at uh, some different schools like uh, here at, or some collaborators at UCF and some other schools. Thank you.